Man, these guys are absolutely adorable. <laughs> Ooh. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. If you're new here, I make videos about keeping specialty pets, such as reptiles, amphibians, and different types of really interesting cool invertebrates. That's a mouthful. So if you like what you see here today, don't forget to subscribe down below and then ding the notification bell afterwards so that you don't miss any of my future content. So guys, today we are going to be doing a really exciting update on my little baby tadpoles, or I don't even know, do I call them that anymore? Because the thing is, they've metamorphosized into froglets. So back in May, if you remember, I made a video about Lazuli and Cyani my Dendrobates tinctorius azurus poison dart frogs and showed you guys that they had produced two little tadpoles. Well, I've raised those tadpoles up and sort of documented their growth and development up until this point where they have developed lungs, climbed out of the water, and are now ready to be moved into a grow out bin. So today we're gonna be doing that. I wanted to kind of show you the stages of their development leading up to now. We'll set them up in a nice little bin and I'll show you guys that. And then, yeah, you'll get to see them wander around. They're so cute and it's super interesting. For today's question of the day, I wanted to ask you guys, would you ever keep dart frogs? And if so, what species or locality do you like? If you're already keeping them, let me know what you have. I look forward to giving your comment a heart and engaging in a bit of a conversation down below. So, let's get right into it. All right guys, so as I mentioned, I was gonna share a little bit on raising the tadpoles. So here they are when they were young, so wholesome to see. Raising them was pretty easy. I kept them in tannin water using Indian almond leaves. I put some java moss in there. And I would usually feed them frog and tadpole bites as well as some bug bites. And that was the primary source of their diet. They did really well on this. And every few weeks what I would do is siphon out a bunch of the water and replace it with some fresh RO and tannin water again just to remove a lot of the fecal material. And that was sort of the premises for how I raised these tadpoles until they gradually developed more and more. And in the footage, you can see that they're growing their back legs. And from there, it just kind of went super hyper speed. They developed their front limbs so quickly afterwards and absorbed their tails in like a week's time. It was actually crazy how fast that happened. So yeah, raising them was a blast. All right guys, so as you can see, the tadpoles have metamorphosized into froglets. And it's pretty crazy how fast they absorb their tails. Literally, within like two or three days, uh, they were gone. So what I did with these little froglets is as they began to develop more and more, I reduced the water level and added some more java moss to the water so that they had more of something to sit up on and breathe if they needed to, obviously. That would prevent any potential drowning worries. And it worked out well. Okay guys, so I prepared a small grow out bin for the dart frogs using a shoebox container. I drilled holes in it for ventilation. We're going to be using sphagnum moss as the substrate. And so what we want to do is place about an inch deep layer of this into the bottom of our bin, which is the perfect amount to help root our plant cuttings and provide adequate substrate for the froglets. Next, we're going to give a gentle misting of reverse osmosis water to that moss to moisten it properly in preparation for the plant cuttings and the froglets. Next, I'm adding a cocoa hut as a shelter for the frogs to hide under. I use these for all my other dart frogs. And now comes my favorite part adding the plant cuttings. These are all cuttings I took from plants I've been growing a few months, whether they be in my greenhouse, you can find a video about my indoor greenhouse up above, or my other frog tanks. Among the cuttings are various species of Selaginella, Pilea, the Creeping Ficus, Begonia, Peperomia, and Pelionia. The next thing I'm doing here is adding a few tidbits of oak leaf litter. This leaf litter will provide shelter for the springtails we're going to add afterwards, as well as sort of a drier platform or a drier hardscape that the animals can climb onto. 
So adding leaf litter is super beneficial. It also helps with a bit of tannin release, which is also really nice. So just kind of systematically tetrising in some leaf litter, as you can see, because I don't want to cover any of the plants. Okay, perfect. I'd say that looks great. All right, guys, so as I mentioned, we're going to be adding springtails. So here they are. These fascinating little invertebrates are no longer considered insects and now belong to the subclass Columbola. Now, the incredibly beneficial aspect of adding these to any enclosure is that they play an important role in the decomposition of organic materials, cycling of nutrients, and the formation of soil microstructures. The main reason we're adding them to this enclosure is that they're going to provide the froglets with a food source while they're super tiny. We'll also have to add more throughout the week that are dusted in supplements. Another great thing about springtails is that they consume mold, which is very important in an enclosure that has high humidity levels. Now we're putting in a shallow water dish with some reverse osmosis water for the froglets if they choose to bathe. So here they are. Yeah, we're gonna get them into their new container. I'm guessing this guy, little guy's gonna jump back in the water, but we'll see what happens. Bring them down. And then I'll bring the other one. So now that we've seen the froglets are climbing up the wall and hanging out out of the water, we know that their lungs are developed and they're ready to come out into the enclosure. So let's go ahead and move them in there. It's gonna be super awesome, so sweet. Look at this little munchkin. Hi, buddy. It's actually adorable. There's the other froglet right there. Alrighty, buddy, let's get you guys out of there. So I'm just gonna be wearing some gloves so that my oily skin doesn't touch the froglets. Gonna rinse these off in RO water. Okay, so I've rinsed the gloves. Now we're gently just going to collect the froglets, which ah, is gonna be fun when they're in the water. Now, a lot of people will just put little cups into the grow bin and tilt them, and they'll just climb out when ready. I didn't have any tiny cups, so these containers are way too big to fit into the grow bin, obviously. So we're just gonna do this because we know that the froglet's large enough to go in. Okay, here we go, guys. This is so exciting. First little froglet. There you go, buddy. Oh my goodness. Welcome to the world. Welcome to land. It's like evolution. Now I'm gonna get the second one here. All right, buddy, go ahead. There you go. Look at them, guys. They're so cute. Hello there. So hopefully they'll start eating in a few days, I would imagine. I mean, they could start eating now, but I'm not sure if they will. But yeah, guys, how exciting. I mean, it actually took quite a bit of time for them to get to this age, but Nonetheless, thrilled because this is the first time I've ever produced dart frogs, let alone grown and raised tadpoles into froglets. So really looking forward to giving you guys updates on these little cutie patooties. If you guys have any name suggestions for them, maybe we can think of something like that for fun too. But oh, this one's on the move. Hey little guy. Settling? They'll settle in? Oh, they're so small. They're like the size of my index finger now. They're pretty tiny. You may also have noticed that the color on them is kind of wonky. It's really dark. And I'm very curious to see how this progresses, if they'll just naturally develop the normal Azurus colors in a bit, uh, or if they're going to stay like their father, because their father, Lazuli, he seems to be exhibiting some sort of color morph. He looks very different compared to other Dendrobates tinctorius azurus. He has a sort of gray blue coloration with very dark blue or like dark gray blue legs. And these babies so far seem like they're gonna look like him, which is interesting because 
I had asked a lot of people about what they thought with regards to his color. Most folks said that it's sort of a random mutation, doesn't pass down, but looking at these babies, I'm not 100% sure that's the case. They, they do look a little funky. You enjoying a nice little bath there, buddy? It's two days after setting up the enclosure. Everything's looking as it should. And yeah, the little froglets are happy. Man, they are so cute. All right guys, so there you have it. It's pretty incredible to see an animal go from a little tadpole to developing into this beautiful, tiny, like pinky nail sized froglet. I'm gonna be giving them lots of springtails and then graduating them up to seeing if they can eat the melogaster fruit flies. It's gonna be wonderful and you'll definitely see a nice update as they progress and grow larger. So really hope you enjoyed this video and if you like, you can follow me on my other social medias down below. I have my Instagram, TikTok now, Facebook, Twitter, and my Patreon. So if you'd like to support me there for as little as $2 a month, you can go on and follow the link in my description where you can unlock different exclusive content, personalized messaging and letters, as well as merch. Awesome. All right, guys, so thanks so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. Take care. And if you want to see more content about dark frogs, click the playlist up above. Bye, guys.